Good evening to everybody. Uh, thank you very much to join us uh, tonight, uh, despite the time. And uh, we just wait uh, all the others, just exactly the 6.30 as scheduled. I'm glad to present you Dr. Tatiana Falconi. Hello to everybody. Good evening. I'm Roberto Terruzzi, sales manager at Asa Laser. And uh, here, Tatiana, she degree is uh, a veterinary doctor. She degree at the University of Milano. She is a speaker at several courses organized by Professor Denois. Actually, she is now at the CIRAL because tomorrow she will have uh, a presentation at the, at the CIRAL in Normandy. Uh, she's also a speaker for uh, the specialization school in, in equine medicine um, in Milano. And she degree a veterinary acupuncture uh, master degree, and uh, she is one of our uh, clinical trainer for especially for equine. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, just to to mention the the organization of the webinar. This is the first module of these dinner talks. Basically, the plan is uh, to uh, to have five different modules uh, from now up to uh, January, February next year. So we will have basically one module each month. And each module, basically, uh, in each module, we will cover different topics. OK? And each module is organized, uh, will be, is organized in this way. Basically, uh, I will provide you some tips about the laser principle some tips about uh, specifically about uh, our MLS laser therapy and then uh, we will enter in the clinical uh, topic uh, every time it will be different and tonight uh, as you can as you can see we will talk about acute inflammation oof and skin lesions okay uh, I invite you to um, ask questions in the chat and uh, we will uh, we will answer you um, depending step by step or at the end of the of the presentation of the clinical focus so this is the plan of the um, of the models so let's start from the first one okay first of all uh, some tips about laser principle basically what is a laser a laser is uh, this is a very um, schematic diagram there is an energy pump that stimulate an active material um, the active material stimulated with energy produce emit photons through a let me say a barrel a laser beam a collimator so basically the photons emitted by the active material are spread over a certain one direction okay with a certain frequency or um, as as we use in the laser technology with a certain wavelength which determine the color okay so basically uh, the active material stimulated by energy emit these photons uh, the photons are sent in one direction with one wavelength and depending on the active material this is very important you have different wavelength as you can see the active material can be a gas like for example co2 many many um, surgical laser for example are gas laser uh, can be a solid state what does it mean a, a crystal with certain chemical components inside or can be a diode laser. Diode laser, depending on the material of manufacturing, you have a different wavelength, okay? Then the other uh, big classification is the, um, the uh, power, depending on the power. So we have low level laser or cold laser or class 3B laser, basically with a power less than 500 milliwatts. Now, I mean, more and more, there are high power laser or class four laser with a power 
higher than 500 milliwatt. Tonight, we will talk about uh, MLS, which is a high power laser. Um, we said that uh, when we stimulate a material, the material emit certain photons. The emission of the photons can be continuous or chopped or pulsed. Uh, basically, this is the, in a very, very briefly, continuous means that the power is always at the same level over the time. Chopped means that uh, some time is off, some time is on, and so on. Pulsed means that uh, uh, the T on is very short in time, but very powerful in terms of high power. Later, I will explain you which are the benefits in using one technology or the other. Um, now, wh why we said MLS, uh, uh, we focus the development of MLS, um, especially from, with the concept from power to discipline. Because basically, our idea was to offer a very powerful laser, but with a, a special technology in order that you can use this power at the maximum level without any risk of damage, thermal damage. That's, that's our, let me say, goal. Um, basically, what is MLS? Now, let entering in our product line. MLS is uh, um, the result of a synchronization between a pulsed emission and a continuous emission. And uh, we have uh, two patents. First of all, the synchronization of the two emissions, because in this way we can trigger three different effects, uh, analgesic, uh, anti-edema, and anti-inflammation um, effect. Plus, we have a second patent, which is the optical group. What, the, what is the goal of the optical group? In order to merge the emission and to have an homogeneous treatment over the tissue, over the area that we are, we are going to, to treat. Um, basically, so we have two emission wavelengths, uh, continuous and pulsed, synchronized together. So basically, when you push the button, they are always together. Special overlapping because we have a, 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 spe a lens in order to merge the, um, the uh, two emission in order to have an homogeneous treatment. With a target area, what does it mean target area? Here, basically, we have a spot. We can, we will have, we have two different handpieces, one small of three square centimeter and one bigger, especially to treat big area of a quine of twenty square centimeter. Think about a three square centimeter or twenty square centimeter spot deep around four or five centimeters. So basically, all the the cylinder is a, is like a cylinder that is treated homogeneously in the same way. So we spread the photons, the energy, homogeneously over all the different level of this uh, cylinder. Um, basically, the, the wavelengths are set in the, we call, therapeutic window, because basically in this window, yes, you still you have absorption by, by the photons, by different chromoform like hemoglobin, melanin, and water, because otherwise you don't have any effect. At the, but at the minimum level, because basically, what is the goal? The goal is to penetrate, to get the photons as deep as possible, because our goal is uh, to get the photons in the muscle, in the tendons, in the joint, and uh, uh, to avoid that they, they are stopped in the superficial layer of the skin, because basically, when you use the laser and you feel warm, this means that the majority of the photons are absorbed by the superficial layer of the skin, which are very rich of water. In our case, we select a wavelength in order to penetrate deep in the, in the structure. Okay. Um, this is what happens basically when you, you use our laser. So you have a synchronization between the pulsed emission and the continuous emission. And what is the benefit? The benefit is that if you have a continuous emission or a chopped emission, as many other solutions, uh, basically there is an accumulation of energy in a specific area. The tissue absorbs the energy, 
but has no time to disperse the energy that is not absorbed. So basically, there is a, the result is that there is a, a very high accumulation of energy, which results in a, in a very fast increase of temperature in the area. So basically, you can uh, overcome the thermal damage threshold very quickly, and you can create damage. With our solution, basically, since the, the major component of energy is due to the pulsed emission, basically, of course, we give a very energetic package. Uh, of course, the temperature, as you can see, increase. But then from one package to the next one, we give time to the tissue to cool down. So basically, to disperse the energy that it is not absorbed. Thanks to this, you can make the treatment even steady, scanning or steady, without any risk of the thermal damage. That's the great advantage of MLS. Um, we have a patent uh, regarding the, this. And uh, uh, now what uh, we will start uh, the uh, clinical part, uh, thanks to uh, Dr. Tatiana Falconi. And uh, I invite you to put questions in the chat in order to be interrupted. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Thank you. Thank you, Roberto, for uh, this kind introduction. Now uh, we will go uh, to something more deep in, uh, in, in some more clinical effect of, uh, of laser on a specific on horses. So uh, what we can reach with the, the, the laser therapy is uh, the anti-inflammatory effect, the anti-edema effect, and the an analgesic effect, which are contemporary in the same time when we are treating, and they go very, very fast in this effect. And we can reach also a peer stimulation, reparative, and regenerative action. These, for this kind of actions, we need uh, more treatments or more sessions, uh, for example, for, for tendons lesion or very big lesions. Uh, um, but let's start to see some examples. Um, what is uh, the, the benefit for the use of laser therapy? First of all, it's painless, so the, the horse doesn't feel any pain or anything uh, uh, which hurts him. It's non-invasive and non-toxic, so the, the horse tolerates very well this kind of treatment. There is a great efficacy, so the pain relief is provided from the very first uh, applications, uh, uh, mostly if it is uh, an acute, uh, in a very acute situation, you can really see this, is, in this uh, kind of efficacy very, very fast. It's uh, easy and intuitive to use because uh, uh, we have protocols uh, inside uh, the, the machine. Uh, due to the high power, we have uh, uh, reduced the treatment times, so uh, we don't need to treat uh, very long uh, each time. So the sessions uh, are quite uh, short, and it is uh, uh, a good thing for, for the horses that uh, they don't need to stay uh, half an hour or one hour for a, a good application. The efficacy is, uh, you can see it in few treatment sessions, and you have the simultaneous action to, uh, on inflammation, edema, and pain. Why this? Because we have uh, the simultaneous action of the continuous wave, uh, which is, uh, first of all, uh, an action on inflammation and edema. In the same time, the pulse emission has, uh, first of all, uh, action on uh, the, the most important action on pain. So the, the fact that you use uh, this simultaneously, these uh, two kinds of um, emissions, you can get the, the simultaneous action during your treatment. Uh, as Roberto showed you, you, we have an homogeneous distribution of energy. It's not like a shower, but we have this all the spot uh, where we have the a good distribution, a uniform distribution of the energy in uh, depth. Um, we have no habit to therapy, so even if uh, we need more treatment, we don't need to increase the power of, uh, of the treatment to, to get uh, the effect. 
and uh, long-lasting results. This is very important. Once we get a result, it will stay also in, in time. We don't need the next time to start from the beginning again. So uh, we will uh, go and talk to uh, this evening about how to treat uh, preparation of the patient. Uh, of course, we have to remove dirt because we are using light. If uh, there is uh, a lot of dirt, we cannot think that the light is able to, to, to get into the depth. So we, we need to brush or wash uh, the part. It's not a big problem if uh, we treat a horse uh, uh, with a uh, wet leg, for example, but we have to keep in mind that uh, we should uh, um, lower a, a bit the energy because uh, um, with a, a, a wet leg, uh, the, the energy is more absorbed than if it is dry. It is not necessary to clip the hair unless we have, uh, for example, a, a a fat lock of a shy horse to treat. In this case, it's better to, to clip it a bit. We have to clean wounds from crusts and exudates if uh, we needed to, to treat wounds, like we, I will show you uh, tonight. And uh, it's very interesting uh, that if uh, we treat wounds in a white leg, for example, it could happen that temporarily we have a pigmentation around the margins, but don't worry, it will, it will go away um, when uh, you finish uh, your treatments. So you don't need to sedate the patient. This is very important because uh, first of all, you need a feedback during the treatment. Uh, not in the case of tonight, but uh, uh, if you treat, uh, for example, uh, trigger points or muscular pain. Uh, so you need a, a feedback from the horse and uh, the, the horse doesn't feel anything during the treatment, so you don't need to sedate him. Uh, you need to palpate the target area you want to treat in order to locate painful points to treat. Um, work against the hair only if uh, you have very long hair, like in winter, but otherwise it's not necessary, but it's very important to hold the handpiece perpendicular to the tissue. Otherwise you lose a, quanti a certain quantity of energy, uh, which, uh, which we will be reflect reflected. So uh, when you have osteosynthesis materials, which is quite rare in horses and more usual in uh, small animals, you can, treat anyway the horse, but better surrounding uh, this, uh, the, the material in treating the soft tissues around the, the surgical material. So <clears throat> how to treat? If the skin is intact, you keep the handpiece firmly in contact with the skin uh, in order not to lose uh, energy. But uh, if uh, you treat a wound, you can uh, even stay half a centimeter away from the skin. Or if uh, uh, the horse is very, very painful and he doesn't want to be touched, uh, you can also stay away just a bit that he doesn't feel really anything and any contact. Um, of course, uh, as I said before, you have to remove necrotic tissues and to clean the wound if you treat and frequency, what about frequency? Is, uh, uh, frequency is defined as the number of light pulses issued in one second. The unit of measure is Hertz. Why well, it is so important to talk about frequency? Because uh, each frequency stimulates certain function in the body, but uh, in particular, particularly in the horse, you need to choose the right frequency for the tissue you want to treat in order to get the best result. So when we treat, we can decide to use continuous wave or specific frequencies. So we will talk to the specific frequency I will use for the uh, protocols uh, uh, for the cases for tonight. And uh, how often we need to treat 
So in an acute situation, we can even treat every other day. In chronic disease, uh, one or two times a week, it's enough. Wounds, we can decide to treat every time we, we take the, the bandage off, or we can decide also to treat once or two times a week. It depends how far the horse is. And of course, more uh, often we treat the, the horse, less energy we have to put uh, to, to the wound. Uh, maintenance it a con is a concept when, for example, uh, I, I treat uh, back, uh, the back of the horses. Uh, once I have reached the result, uh, then I can uh, repeat a single treatment once or twice a month just to maintain uh, the, the results I, I reached. Uh, we can use also laser for acupuncture. We can use uh, it uh, instead of needles or together with needles. It's not a problem. So, what about, about dosages? Dosages, uh, uh, the therapeutic, therapeutic dose uh, is expressed as energy per unit area, area of tissue to treat. So we talk about joule per square centimeters. So it's very important to keep in, in mind uh, this, uh, uh, this dosage because I have to know how much energy I give in each point. I recommend always not to exceed one uh, 500 joule total body uh, when I treat a, a whole horse before competition because some horses uh, uh, react uh, and are very tired and relaxed uh, after a, a big treatment with laser therapy. So uh, if it is just before a competition, I, I keep in mind not to exceed this uh, quantity of energy uh, for one treatment. If I have to treat more uh, section, more regions of the horse, then I divide uh, the, the problems into two days, uh, not to exceed this uh, 500 joule. The, um, the dodges I use uh, mostly for acute pathologies don't exceed one joule per square centimeters. They can be less if I treat very often. And in chronic pathologies, uh, I go from 1, 1 1.5 to 2 joule per square centimeters. But uh, we will see it in some cases I will propose you. So what about acute pain? And we can have in a, a lot of situations acute pain. So the treatment will not change because uh, we are just uh, treating a symptom. I mean, so the protocols for uh, acute pain have, uh, um, uh, are, have uh, work with 18 hertz and mostly with one joule per square centimeters. Sometimes uh, if there is uh, uh, no uh, respond, response to, um, to this uh, protocol, we can try the protocol for sacroiliac subluxation because uh, it's, uh, the menu has a, a, a protocol with 1,168 Hz, which is very effective if uh, the pain is very concentrated in, uh, in one spot. And in this case, again, I use one joule per square centimeters. So, uh, so Sometimes I can uh, add also the protocol for edema. Mostly I use it after, the, um, of, after using the protocol for acute uh, pain. So these are, these are the frequency I use mostly when I have, I have a situation of acute pain. But I want to show you a clinical case. Here uh, we have uh, um, Esther, a female horse, uh, the mare, who was in the paddock and could not eat anymore. Uh, I, I saw uh, a very bad hay, so I wanted to open her mouth uh, to see what happened inside. And it was impossible to get to her because she was so painful that I needed to sedate her very, very deep 
to to oh, to get it to open her mouth. So this was it, the situation I found. There were a lot of very deep ulcers, so deep that I could reach uh, the bone of the mandibula for three or four centimeters. I clean it and uh, I uh, started uh, with the uh, uh, with the treat laser treatment for uh, uh, for um, the pain, I will show you. Okay. Here you see, without coming in contact with the surface with the mucosa, the treatment was uh, eighteen hertz acute pain and edema just a few seconds afterwards okay afterwards uh, when the sedation was gone she could eat without any problem without any pain it was possible also for uh, the owner to wash her mouth uh, in the next days and it was not necessary to sedate her anymore. So the pain was completely gone. So in day one, the protocol I used was acute pain, 18 hertz, edema, 10 hertz. And I repeated the treatment in day four and day, day seven only with the protocol for edema because I had no pain anymore. So I don't need it uh, to, to repeat the protocol for acute pain. And this is the result in day four. We have uh, uh, already a good granulation, no pain at all. And then day seven, it, it was co almost completely um, okay. So it was very interesting, the control of the pain, the very, very first uh, time I treated her mouth. So the control of the pain was uh, really amazing. I want to show you another case of control of acute pain. Uh, this horse, uh, um, they put a wrong size blanket on him, on him and uh, there was a harrowing of, uh, at the withers with a really a big, big pain. I will show you the video. Okay. This was uh, before the treatment. It was uh, really very, very dangerous to get at him. He tried to, to kick also with the hind legs to jump. It was really very, very difficult to help his horse. And after a, a very short treatment of some seconds with the Charlie, the, that was the, the result. A few seconds, no pain anymore. The horse was uh, very nice. It was uh, uh, easy to touch him, to control him. It was not dangerous for anybody and it was a, uh, so one treatment was enough. It was not necessary to have more treatments after this one. So also in this case, uh, I can say that the control of the pain was really, really amazing, very fast and permanent in the results. Uh, when I have horses which are very dangerous and I have big pain, I use always the Charlie hand piece, the big one, because I don't need to touch the horse. I don't need to go too near to the horse and uh, it's uh, not dangerous uh, for me and for the people holding the horse. So these uh, two cases are very interesting. What about the hoof? What protocols we can use? Uh, we can use uh, different protocols. We can use acute pain with 18 hertz edema, 10 hertz, wound, if I have uh, uh, a wound on the, the coronary band, for example, continuous wave, acute tendonitis, if uh, we want, uh, uh, or chronic tendonitis, if we, uh, we need to treat uh, uh, the ligaments, 
uh, or uh, the deep digital flex or tendon. And uh, we can use also the protocol for the bursitis if we need to treat the bursa of the navicular gorilla. So we have different protocols that we can use in the hoof. It depends what we want uh, to, you, to treat and why we need to treat the horse. So we can treat the horse locally, point per point. We can treat the hoof wall. And normally I, I double the energy that I use. We can treat the coronary band and we can treat the sole. So also for the, for the hoof wall and the, um, the sole, I double the energy, which normally is uh, in, the, in the protocols of uh, the MLS machine. So uh, some protocols for acute laminitis. Uh, it is uh, very important in this case to, to start the treatment as soon as possible because uh, uh, using laser I can reduce uh, the edema of the lamina and, uh, and also the pain. So the protocols I would use is uh, acute pain, 18 hertz, 2 joule per square centimeter. Why 2 joule? Because I'm treating the, uh, the hoof wall and I'm treating the sole. I'm, uh, and then I, I would use uh, uh, the protocol edema, 10 hertz, one joule per square centimeter on the coronary band if I treat only once a day. But if I can treat the horse in very acute situation two times a day, then I have to reduce this quantity, this amount of energy. And, uh, and I use uh, 0 0.7 joule per square centimeters on the coronary band if I treat twice a day. On the hoof wall and the sole, I use edema protocol, 10 hertz, but this time two joule per square centimeter because I have to go through the hoof, uh, the hoof wall and the, the sole. So these are the protocols in case of acute laminitis. In chronic laminitis, uh, uh, I don't think uh, uh, we can see so much effect uh, as in acute situation. So I mostly treat acute laminitis. In case of naviculitis or prodotrochlear syndrome, the protocols we can uh, think to use uh, is uh, the uh, protocol fracture, uh, which has uh, uh, 73 hertz, why fracture? Because it, um, it's uh, 70 hertz is uh, the frequency typical for treating bones. So uh, each time when there is a bone component, uh, this is uh, a frequency that is useful. So if I need to treat the navicular bone, I use uh, uh, the protocol fracture. I can use acute tendonitis or chronic tendonitis on the navicular ligaments or on the deep digital flexor tendon. And I can use the protocol for bursitis on the navicular bursa. So if I have the opportunity to, to, have, to know exactly where uh, the, the problem comes from, for example, if I had the possibility to make an MRI, so I can choose uh, uh, the correct treatment. But if I don't have this, I can also choose uh, to, to treat all over, not all in the same session. So I divide, uh, for example, one time I treat the bone, one time I treat the soft tissues, and one time I, I treat the, the bursa. Here I want to show you, show you a case. This was a fracture of the navicular bone that um, after two months of uh, standing in the box with a, with a good fire work, uh, there was no difference in lameness, no difference in the uh, X-rays. So there was no remodeling of the navicular bone. Then I started to treat with uh, laser, laser therapy. The protocols was for the bone, but also for the, the ligaments of, uh, of the navicular bone. And after two treatments, he could uh, walk without big problems and it was possible to start a rehabilitation program. After other two months of treatment, 
he was uh, sound and uh, at the X gate we could see here uh, a, a good remodeling of uh, the bone, more uh, more calcification of the margin. Of course, it's uh, not possible in uh, in the navicular bone to get it together anymore. But the pain, the pain was gone, and it was possible uh, to to have it uh, again in uh, in activity. So this only using laser without medicaments. Another case for the hoof, it was a case of onychom white line disease. And uh, in this case, I, um, I had to, to do a big job with the fire. And after this job, the, the horse was really very lame because uh, he, he had to, to go very near to the sensitive part of the hoof. So I treated uh, him for acute pain on the lamina and edema on the coronary band and lamina. I will show you the treatment. Okay. Okay, here I'm treating around the lamina where the, um, where the horse was cut on the hoof and where he was uh, quite sensitive in painful. Okay, protocol for acute pain and for edema. You see the handpiece is per perpendicular to the uh, region where I want to treat. And then I treated also the coronary band around all this part. After these uh, protocols, the horse went into his bo box without any lameness uh, or pain on the hoof uh, anymore. So uh, I think in this case, it's not really to treat, um, to treat uh, the white line disease, but the pain and the edema of the lamina due to the treatment of the fire. So some cases for skin lesions. So we had uh, this uh, uh, yearling with a, a very bad situation of granulation tissues, which was uh, surg surgically cut away. But afterwards, there was not a good blood supply. And uh, uh, with the dressing and bandages, uh, the um, in the skin didn't want to close. Afterwards, uh, we started laser on the margin every two or three days with the protocols edema, one joule per square centimeters. You can use it also, uh, I treat it every two or three days, but if you use it every day, you have to lower down the energy to 0.7. And, uh, and the wound protocol with the continuous wave, one joule per square centimeter, again on the margins, not inside. If you treat wounds uh, on the leg, you don't, uh, you don't have to treat inside the wounds because you don't want to stimulate too much granulaceous tissues. But uh, it's better to treat only around the, the, the lesion. In this case, after four weeks, it was completely closed. So it was a really a very big result. Here, another case. This, uh, uh, this horse uh, uh, had a very bad lesion on the hind leg. This, uh, the first picture is 10 days after suture. After other two weeks without laser therapy, is, uh, the, there was a situation in picture two. So there was granulaceous tissues, but not a good repair. And it was uh, quite hard for the skin to get rid of uh, the problem. We started laser therapy. And after only 10 days uh, and four treatments uh, totally, we had the result that you see in the third image. So it was really a, a very good result in very short time. 
another case, this was a, a 13 years old mares. mares. She lives uh, free in huge property with the wood and uh, she was found with this uh, big lesion in, uh, on the carcass. This was uh, after cleaning. Uh, of course, she was uh, lame and there was a, a lot of edema. So first of all, of all, we, we try to, to treat pain because to me it's uh, the most important thing to control pain, first of all. So I treated it with 18 Hertz. Afterwards, I tried to control edema because uh, I wanted to uh, have uh, the horse with more comfort in his movements. And only afterwards, I treated also with wound and that every two days. Here you can see the results after eight days, 13, 20, and it was uh, practically uh, completely closed after 25 days. The mare was not lame at all, and uh, it was a really a, a very, very nice result at the end. So I think that uh, uh, using laser, you can promote the healing, but a good healing and um, also the, the, the signs of uh, the wound will be less than if you treat uh, a horse without using laser. So I want to show you uh, a video of uh, a very interesting case of a very uh, big wound from a bite of the neck of uh, a bite of a dog, they think it be a mm -hmm. So you can follow the, this case now. Can you hear the? Can you hear the voice of uh, of the video? But anyway, anyway. This uh, was a, a, a bow, bite wound on the neck with a, um, a lot of, in the uh, jugular area, with a lot uh, of necrosis of the tissues and a lot of inflammation. Uh, she was um, treated, of course, with anti-inflammatory drugs and antibiotics. This was the situation at the arrival at the clinic. During the first days, uh, uh, it was very important to clean very well the wound and protect with uh, some cream. And this was the situation on day four, when they started the treatment with the uh, uh, laser therapy. So, we can already see that uh, from day five to day 14, there is some kind of improvement. And we, we see uh, the formation of granulaceous tissues. Of course, in this case, I would treat also inside the lesion and not only the margin, because I want to promote this, the formation of granulaceous tissues. Okay, so the medication was changed every two days. And uh, in association with the, the laser therapy, after almost 50 days, uh, it was uh, a, a good regenerative uh, situation. And at day, we say 90, we can say that uh, the, the horse was uh, almost uh, okay. So this uh, was uh, just uh, some, there was just some example for you for tonight. And I hope uh, you will like this, uh, uh, presentation, these cases. If you have some questions, and I will be glad to answer to you. Okay. okay. I have some questions. Uh, first of all, uh, which is the order that you usually um, plan in the treatment? I mean, you start always from the pain or, or what? 
So each case, it's a different case. To me, the most important thing when I see a, a horse with a, in a, an acute situation is to, is to control pain. This is to me the, the first uh, problem to, to control. After this, I can decide if it is most, uh, more important to treat edema or to treat uh, um, or to stimulate a regenerative tissue, and that depends case to case. But to me, the most important is to control pain first of all. Afterwards, I, I go to the other protocols, and of course, it depends on the situation and what I'm dealing with. But um, in case of a, uh, acute pain, I use acute pain or uh, sacroiliac subluxation if I don't have a good uh, uh, response to this protocol. And afterwards, I use the protocol for edema. This if I don't have pain so much anymore, I don't use this protocol because I want to leave the energy for other protocols that, are, that I need. Okay. And the other question is uh, um, the number of sessions, I mean, during uh, the first week or the second week and so on. So it depends how far the horse is, uh, how far you can treat the horse. So uh, the horse is very near, in very acute situation. I want to, to see the horse uh, at least three times a week, uh, if it is possible. So I will treat every other day. Uh, normally, but if the horse is very far away, I can decide also to treat only two times. In this case, I can use more, more energy because uh, there is more time in between the two sessions, the two treatments, and uh, I know I can use something more. So um, this is uh, what I, I do normally. But uh, if I can, I prefer to, in acute situation, the first week to control pain first of all and to treat three times and then I can decide how to go on. And so basically in, in, in one session you can use different protocols? Yes, uh, yes. In one session, I basically. can use different protocols. Normally I don't use more uh, than two protocols on the same points in one session. So if I, so I decide what is and, more important for the horse in this moment. Yeah. And uh, there is a, any limit of time uh, to, to, to start to apply two different protocols in the same session or you, 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 you start with the I first and with then the you, you finish and then yes, you start I with the second. I go on with the next, yes. Without uh, stopping, without uh, waiting time in between the two sides, in the, the two protocols, yeah. Okay. Um, there is another question. Um, she said, um, um, in the horse protocols, uh, usually there are um, one or two jowl for square centimeter, but the dog are higher uh, usually. Uh, so she's asking uh, why this happened not hear you it was uh, uh, you were yeah, away. there was a break so yeah. basically the question is uh, um, um, probably she's she's uh, um, uh, she's using she's she's using the the MLS and she said she's asking why for for horses uh, the usually the energetic doses are lower than uh, yes. for dogs yes uh, in uh, in our experience uh, we saw that we have a response with very low energy, so we don't uh, uh, think that is necessary to go higher. And in some cases also, we noted that if we use too much energy, we don't have any good response to the therapy. And if we lower down the energy, then the horse respond more. That is uh, why the horse has a high level of energy as an animal and uh, he reacts uh, very quickly to energy more than uh, small animals so um, we think that if uh, we don't need so much energy for to obtain a result why to use more 
So this is uh, uh, why we decide and we see every day that this, this uh, quantity, this amount of energy is enough for treatment. And this permits us also to, to use two protocols at the same time. If I would have a, a protocol with a four joule per square centimeters, I could not use two protocols in the same session on the horse. Yes, because we have another question. Um, that there is any adverse effect if we give more than 500 joule for treatment? So not always, but some very sensitive horses, thoroughbreds or very sensitive horses, if you mm, give more than 500, they can become very tired. They need time to dissipate this amount of energy. So uh, they don't want to go to a competition just after a treatment because they need some rest. If you have a horse at home which is uh, just resting or uh, doesn't need to, to work uh, in the, for the next week, you can use even more energy because you don't have to put the horse into a competition. So, uh, but normally I think it's enough 500 joule per square centimeter, uh, per, per, per horse in one in second. Total, in total, in total. Total, yes. Uh, sometimes uh, I need more uh, if uh, I need to treat the back because uh, we have a lot of big uh, mass of uh, uh, muscles to treat and that can happen that I need more energy. But I, then I give uh, at least one or two days rest to the horse. Yeah. yeah. There is another question, but is referring to the to small animal dogs, and um, this uh, um, this lady is asking uh, that. I mean, basically, is writing that uh, she she has good result even uh, in dogs, even uh, with one or two jaw for square centimeter. And I can answer that. Uh, in my experience, uh, uh, this is very possible because basically, if you do, especially if you do the treatment point by point, uh, uh, you spread the energy very homogeneously and very clearly in one point, and so you don't need a lot of energy. So that's why you can get a very a good result even with lower uh, energy dose. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't see any other questions. Uh, yes, there is a question. Basically, um, if uh, uh, you ask, uh, I mean, we can provide uh, the recording of the of the of the webinar just for a limited time. If you want to review something, uh, so that's that's not a problem. So please ask uh, to your reference, and uh, we will make sure to provide you the link. And uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, the next appointment uh, will be at the, on November, 17th of November, the same time, so 6.30. And the topic will be tendinitis and dysmitis. So I we will see you, I'm hoping to see you again uh, on the 17th of November. Take note at 7.30 in the afternoon. Thank you very much uh, to everybody. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Uh, there is you. a last question. Uh, okay. what, how you choose between uh, continuous mode and frequency mode? So uh, the frequencies, uh, uh, as I said before, are associated to the pathology I want to treat and to the tissue I want to treat. So if I decide to treat a specific tissue, it's better to choose the specific frequency for that tissue. Uh, the continuous wave, uh, it's uh, the way with the, the, um, a big energy because it's not chopped. So I use uh, this uh, protocol uh, with the wounds because it's the protocol of wounds. Or if I have a very chronic situation to stimulate with a big amount of energy, but it's not the case of tonight. We will discuss about this option in uh, the next session with the tendonitis, where we can treat also chronic tendonitis and use the, uh, the continuous wave uh, 
uh, better than on acute situation because it's too much energy exactly. Exactly. for an acute situation. Exactly. Okay, I think uh, that's all for tonight. I will see. We will see you on the 17th of November. Thank you very much, yes. and uh, I Bye. wish uh, a great uh, end of the day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.